Let's talk about how to use Python to perform sensitivity analysis. This lecture is actually an extension of linear programming in Python. If you haven't studied that class, I listed the lecture video down below. Please take a look at that class before you move forward in this lecture. In a sensitivity analysis report, we look at two important factors, slack values and shadow prices. A slack value indicates if a constraint has used up all the resources it has. If it has, the slack value of that constraint equals to zero. If it hasn't, the slack value of that constraint will have a number that is greater than zero. Some people will also use a binding or not binding to indicate if a constraint has used up all the resources. If the slack value of a constraint equals to zero, then we say that constraint is in binding status. Of course, that means that constraint has used up all the resources it has. Otherwise, we say the constraint is not in a binding status. The second factor we are looking at is shadow price. Sometimes we can get the more resources. For example, we will get more budget money or hire more employees. A shadow price indicates how much the objective variable will change if we give these additional resources to a constraint. If a constraint has a zero as a, its shadow price, that means no matter how much more resources we put into that constraint, the objective value will not change. Otherwise, it will increase or decrease. These are the two factors we are looking at in a sensitivity analysis report. Now let's take a look at the Python part. It's actually very simple to perform sensitivity analysis by using Python. We just need to add a few lines into the linear programming scripts. We should be able to get an answer. This is a script we developed last time, right? Uh, by the way, I will also list the script down below. You can download the script directly. Let's work on this script. First, I want to change the script a little bit. Let's move the objective value directly into the print function. Make some profits, and then I add a comma, and then paste the objective value. And below that, I'm going to develop the sensitivity analysis code. Once you use the solve function to perform the linear programming analysis, the sensitivity analysis results will be calculated and saved into a variable called the constraints.items of the pop package. We don't have to calculate them again. We just need to find a way to put them out of the pop package. Obviously, I'm going to use a for loop to put them out. But this time we have a shadow prices, slack values. It will be better if we store them in order. I'm going to use a dictionary data type to store the results. A dictionary type is very similar to an array in Python. Basically, a dictionary and an array can both save data into a data set. The only difference is a dictionary can classify data into different groups and then we are able to give a name, a unique ID to different group. By using a dictionary data type, we should be able to say which data belong to slack values, which data belong to shadow prices. Let me show you. First, I want to create a variable called SR. This will store all the sensitivity analysis reports. SR equals two brackets, square brackets. The reason we have a square brackets is we want to put a, a dictionary data type and a, a for loop together. We want to combine them together. That's why we want to include the statement by using a set of square brackets. First, let me create the, the for loop. Let's type in for cname, comma, cinfo, in profit, dot constraints dot items 
As I just mentioned, currently the sensitivity analysis report is stored in the variable constraints.items. That's why we want to put them out of the package, right? We use a for loop. I created two variables, cname and cinfo. Cname stands for constraint name. Cinfo stands for the information about the constraint, such as shadow price and uh, slack values. This is the for loop. Next, I'm going to create a dictionary dataset to store the information. I want to type in a set of curly braces. I want to create three groups in the dictionary, constraint names, select values, and shadow prices. Let me show you. Let's add a space between the second curly brace and the for loop. We get the data. Now we can show the result. I want to show the results in a table. So let's import the pandas library so that we can use the data frame function. Right below import pop, we want to type in import pandas. We can create a new space line as well. And then finally, we create a new line and then we want to use print function. Between the parentheses, we want to type in pandas dot data frame. And then another set of parentheses. Between the inner parentheses, we type in sr. We give this uh, dictionary data into a table and then show them in order. Let's take a look at the results. Let's click around. Here's the result. As you can see, we get the constraint names, select values of each constraint, and the shadow prices of each constraint. Let's learn how to interpret them. Let's use cutting and dying as an example. The select value of uh, cutting and dying is negative 0, 0.0. The reason we have a negative 0, 0.0 is uh, the software runs the number to a certain point after the decimal points it will not get exactly zero, but we can consider negative 0, 0.0 as zero. So basically, cutting and dying department has a zero as a slack value. That means cutting and dying has used all labor hours. There's nothing left in the cutting and dying department. The shadow price of cutting and dying is 4.37. That means if we have a one more labor hour available. And we give this one more labor hour to the cutting and dying department. Our profit can increase by $4.375. Let's use the second uh, department as another example. The select value of sewing department is 120. That means that department, it still has about 120 labor hours left and the shadow price of that department is zero. That means if we have an additional labor hour available, we give this additional labor hour to sewing department, the profit, the objective value profit will not change. This is reasonable because in the sewing department, we still have 120 labor hours available. We haven't used all available labor hours in the sewing department. So no matter how many additional labor hours we give to the sewing department, the objective variable, which is profit in our case, will not change. That's why you see the shadow price of the sewing department is zero. The report also shows the slack values and the shadow price for the third and the fourth constraints. I want to give them as exercise for everyone to do after the lecture. This is how we use Python to perform sensitivity analysis for a linear programming question. 
And this is how we interpret the sensitivity analysis reports.